What's up, Doombots? It's here. The Battle Pass, Real Time Arena, Patch 5.0, for whatever reason. We're going to talk about that. Because that's kind of the most important thing, because that's the kind of thing that's going to be in the game forever. New characters, they come every month. Battle Pass and uh, Real Time Arena, going to be relevant for a long time. So, first of all, we're going to address the fact that it's named Mojo's Mayhem and the currency is ratings. Uh, a little bit of backstory on the lore. This is a phenomenal lore decision. Mojo is a fat TV executive, much like we have on Earth, only in the galaxy. Uh, as a result of that, he puts on like battle royale TV shows for the entire galaxy. And uh, one of the things that is really cute is how they chose to incorporate our uh, multi-nexus universal battle fight uh, into that. Because that's totally what a network executive or Mojo would do in the reality. Which is, let's take advantage of the fact that reality is crumbling and people are dying by making a TV show about it. So really awesome lore take on that, giving it to Mojo. Kind of explains a little bit why we're getting characters like Shatterstar and Longshot too. So, uh, help Mojo crush. I'm not going to read through everything, just kind of some highlights uh, in Mojo's Mayhem. How the game is played. It's a real-time arena battle, which is very similar to PvP, except no real drafts. We'll go into that. Certain characters are banned, this way you can kind of keep it alive and, and moving. You see that in games like Pokemon, where they have different seasons, and you can't use... Some characters you can never use, some characters you can't use temporarily. Uh, each enemy eliminated during a match is a knockout. Complete Mojo's daily and weekly objectives to earn big-time ratings, and your ratings level refreshes every season. How long are the seasons? We'll get into that as we look, but they probably aren't going to go as long as... Like, months? Probably a little bit shorter. Juicy rewards. This is where the battle pass comes in. Um, and the battle pass is in two parts. What you get for playing and what you get for spending to unlock more. Much like every system that has a battle pass system, you can usually pay more money to complete more of the um, tiers of the battle pass, which we're about to look at. But that's kind of how it goes. And then there's an end of season reward uh, and rewards update every season so they can just make things a little bit spicier. The premium pass gives you the more rewards. All right, so that's it as far as this mail. Let's take a quick look at the event itself and just get an idea of what it's about. You'll see first, uh, Real Time Arena is the uh, new bottom of the event. I originally thought this was PvP. I was half right. It's something for PvP. We're supposed to get more and more stuff on this front screen. Uh, mm, this goes here now, and it makes sense to go there. And if you click on it, you see uh, three kind of things. The first is Mojo's Mayhem. It's a 28-day or 30-day season, roughly, uh, for you to complete the Battle Pass. So you don't have to rush to complete this. It, you have almost a month to complete it uh, as we go. Here is going to be information about leagues. We don't really have much of that right now, but we will see. Uh, and then, of course, we have the Quick, which is how we should be able to do it. And the Event, which is kind of something we haven't planned out for the future. We might see a little bit more, like that spoiled Nick Fury PvP style event they talked about before. That kind of thing might be here. So we don't know exactly what they're gaining behind events, but it's going to be, has to be something interesting or else people just aren't going to be, who aren't interested in PvP aren't going to do it. As you can see, for set next seven days, Ultron, Proxima Midnight, and Carnage are banned. So you have to put together complete teams for this without using those characters. Should be relatively easy. As a result, you can kind of see they're kind of taking either an individually good character like Ultron. You'd imagine characters like Emma or Sinister to kind of fill that slot. A character that is good and completes their team or is potentially just good in PvP, which is why we've been having all these PvP tours lately where you got to see where the best characters in PvP were. And Carnage to kind of remove the most one of the most important parts of the Symbiote team without inherently banning Symbiote Spider-Man. Makes sense. Uh, if we take a look at the Battle Pass now, it's very bright. Uh, maybe tone down the yellows a little bit, but we have two steps. The rewards, which everyone cares about, and the objectives, which is how you obtain rewards, more or less. As the bottom is what everyone's going to get. So if you take a look down right now, click on the button, I got 50 power cores. If I buy the major pa Battle Pass, which is $20, 1999. Uh, I start accruing the rewards up top, which I cannot claim until later. Most places put this at the bottom, 
Uh, I think they're trying to advertise that you should buy this. We'll see. Uh, moving forward, we have, you know, level two, level three, a small amount of rewards. Clearly, the pay for rewards are strictly better, but what really matters is the end. You know, you go across, you see arbitrarily high amounts of random rewards as you move up, going all the way up. There it is, 100. So you have 30 days, or 28 days in this case, to complete 100 ranks of the battle pass. Uh, I don't think that's very realistic for most players. I don't think that that's going to uh, matter. Now, if you do get to rank 100, it becomes very obvious that the, the cost of the $20 from battle pass, giving you all of these rewards, is great. $20 for everything you get is absolutely phenomenal. What you kind of have to look at is the bottom. Oh, this needs to be fixed a little bit. I need to be able to move faster, just for you guys to know, Fox Next. The bottom. Is it worth 20 if you're only going to get to, we'll say, here? Or here? Or here? Is that worth $20? Now, that's up to you and how much you want to spend money. No real notes on that. But if you spend $40, which is 20 plus an additional $20, you already start here. So is $40 worth this reward plus whatever? Again, that's up to your money. It depends on the character. It depends on what you need. Um, I will tell you guys one thing. That you can buy the Battle Pass at any time. It does say limited time offer, um, which I don't think is relevant. I think that it's... It's gonna, you're gonna see it more often. I don't think that they're going to remove the ability for you to buy. However, it might be more expensive, if that makes sense. So, you may see unlock premium rewards in the battle pass for $20, and you know, whenever the battle pass comes up, and for $39.99, you get the rewards plus the first 30 or any 30 tiers. After a day, they may standardize the prices. It might be $25, and you can only get the Battle Pass. You might lose this. I don't imagine that this is going to be buy on day one or don't. Whether or not you believe you're capable of hitting the highest possible milestones or getting your value for whatever the price is, that seems relevant. For this first Battle Pass, being Zemo with the rewards as they are right now, they're very clearly worth. $20, assuming you reach a certain point, where that point is for you, and how likely you are to reach that point, that's going to be up to you. But the free rewards on, on their own seem to be relatively good in the first place. I don't think it's, it's inherently infinite value to buy the Battle Pass off the bat. I think it's one of those things where you either know in, in future months and Battle Passes, you'll be able to kind of determine... Well, I was able to do this and I wasn't really trying, or I tried my hardest and I was only able to accomplish this, or I got all 100 or 75 done without paying attention. Once you know what your ability to complete battle passes are, that's when you're going to determine whether buying it at the beginning of the battle pass and getting, you know, having to click twice every time a reward comes up is relevant to you, or if on the other side of it, you're probably just going to wait at the end and spend whatever the difference of price is. And, and that's that's kind of at the core, the battle pass itself. To look into objectives, this is where things get a little bit cute. This is where you have to see your daily and, of course, your weekly events. All of these seem to be within the context of the real-time arena. And if you check here, it'll tell you complete objectives to earn rating token Check the objectives tabs and the battle pass to see what your daily career time runs out. All Mojo Mayhem objectives must be completed through Real Time Arena. That's a very unique thing, uh, and that alone is going to tell you right now whether you have to care about the battle pass. Whether you want to spend that much time in Mojo's Real Time Arena or not, that's gonna that's it. It, it doesn't really care about you using it. So. All those conversations we've been having for months about what the battle pass could be, what it should be, is it going to be worth it? Do you want to do real-time arena? Yes or no? If the answer is no, don't buy the battle pass. You know, it, it's there's no amount of rewards that are going to make up for 
you doing something that's not fun for you. We've learned that with Blitz, and now we have Blitz Sim, uh, or soon, so they've already determined that nobody was having fun with Blitz. This is a new attempt at that. Hey, how many people are going to enjoy that? They're hoping that more people enjoy real-time PvP than otherwise. Me, I'm still on the fence on it. We'll see as we keep going. Uh, and of course, it's day one of patch. Very unlikely that anything works the way it's supposed to. So, when you look at the dailies, this is incentivizing you to use abilities on characters you otherwise wouldn't. America Chavez, Scientist Supreme, get five knockouts, uh, 15 knockouts, 25 knockouts, with a match, three matches. So as far as dailies are concerned, this seems a little high. It seem, I, I don't necessarily hate the amount of dailies. I like the idea of having a ton of dailies and letting people do whichever ones that make sense. Uh, letting the you as a player have an option. Really great. Feels really great. Uh, but on the other side, some of these options kind of seem weird. Like, obviously, you want to do any one that tells you, you know, high impact. But it's very unlikely you're going to use abilities on America Chavez in the same situation where you're going to be winning a match. So when you look at the dailies, it's very unlikely that you're going to be knocking out too many of these in one. Obviously, specifically knockouts and winning matches kind of go line in. If you win three matches, it's likely you've gotten 15 knockouts. So this is a little bit more, spend a little bit more time, move on. We'll see. Uh, as for using America Chavez or Scientist Supreme, most players probably aren't going to be using abilities on Scientist Supreme, getting knockouts and winning matches, but for a daily, it seems a lot. Moving to the weekly events, which you obviously have more time, you know, complete a match, use a character, a tech character's ability, use support character's abilities, uh, use abilities on She-Hulk. Uh, this is another one where, yeah, it's going to be beneficial to you over the course of the week if you're interested and if this is a game mode that you are super excited for great uh you know it's going to be awesome i think that i like the idea that them using um, zemo as the first character is very good because it's a character that even though he's not very accessible right now most people have him or are interested in him so getting a couple shards of him here or there is going to be relevant but it's not a new character which is what i fear for this uh, I very much fear that a new character being tied to Battle Pass could kind of make the community feel a little bit bad about it. I like the idea of resources. I like the idea of previous characters, new characters. Let's keep them to stuff that we expect or understand. Uh, not necessarily a game mode that's for everybody. Even if Blitz isn't for everybody, it's easy enough now with auto specifically to just kind of keep going. So as far as the daily and weekly requirements... I don't think they're unreasonable. I think there are enough that you can justifiably complete a good portion of them while playing the game for fun. But I do think that they are uh, too wide and varied in what they do. Um, I think that specifically Guardians, America Chavez, and Scientist Supreme are cute. I don't think they give enough rewards for the downside of using technically bad characters um, in, you know, in an attempt to get more knockouts and, and slightly higher. I think that maybe America Chavez and Scientist Supreme should probably be worth, you know, a little bit more than the uh, using of abilities in here. But that's, you know, something that can change over time. No big deal there. Uh, and the weeklies, you have a week. We could, do, we could do the math on this, you know, how many knockouts you have to get on average per day. <sighs> Go ahead and do that. I'm not a huge fan of the idea that 225 gives 17, but Completing more gives you less. You would always think that if I worked harder, I would get more than what I get for less. Um, it does make 225 a really good stopping point. So if these numbers were reversed, I don't know how I'd feel about that. But if 1700 has now been shown as the starting point, going to like 2000 and then 2200 maybe might make a little bit more sense for those people, much like previously in Blitz, who are willing to put the extra time in and try to accomplish them. As of right now, it does appear as though you get significant diminishing returns uh, at quite a few points in the rewards. The last thing to talk about uh, about this entire thing is, of course, that it is real-time PvP, or to some extent, real-time arena. Whether you should buy it or not, is dependent exclusively on how much you like the game mode. That's it. 
It doesn't matter if they gave a thousand Emma shards in there, which is about 190 more than you'd need. None of it matters. The only thing that matters is how much you're going to do it. How great would any offer for Blitz have to be if you didn't like Blitzing? The answer is none. Most people would Blitz for a character milestones, you know, because the milestones were rewarding, but they wouldn't go past that point or they wouldn't go much past that point. And that's something we found over time. That's going to prove true here. There's probably a good deal of people who are really excited about Real Time Arena. I, for one, am. I really like the idea of PvP in this game because it's about skill. I like the idea of using skill based on what you've done, being paired against people who are very similar to you, and seeing who the better player is. That's how most skill-based games work. So I am looking forward to that. What I'm not looking forward toward is what amount of this I have to do and the amount of this I get rewarded from doing something I love. So should you buy the battle pass? Quick answer, only if you're going to PvP. Long answer, if you're going to PvP and you're going to complete a ton of these and make completing these resources your like number one priority, the steps as you move into the battle pass, the objectives to get more and more rewards, Yes, I don't think $20 on day one is worth 550, you know, 500 extra cores. I don't think that, you know, once you complete 10, I don't think it's worth the 20 or so shards you're getting uh, in addition to these arbitrary gears. I think that obviously it gets better as you move on. I think that the total pool is worth more than the amount of money that they're asking you for. But you're not really buying anything. You're buying the opportunity to take credit for the effort you're putting in. I'm not a big fan of buying something today and getting value for it later. I do think that overall, the idea of buying the battle pass later, as long as it shows up, which it should, is a better deal for most players because you can then look and say, you know, I got to level 40, is $20, 25 whatever the number they put, worth these you can even go back and say would twenty dollars have been there and then you can decide going forward so for this month if you're on the fence about it don't buy it what are you missing out on resources no big deal future months take your time look and see what you did and how much you cared about it honestly nothing can be worse in this game than buying the battle pass today realizing you hate real-time pvp real-time arena don't want to do it anymore and then you've gotten a couple of resources or you're forced to play this game, it's going to make you mad. Don't do that. Don't waste your time. I'm not buying it yet, uh, but if that means I spend a little bit extra money to learn, then that's a one-time lesson I pay a little bit extra for, and I think that's totally reasonable. Hopefully this information was helpful to you. Hopefully you can you know, kind of decide what's important to you, and comment below. Let me know if you like PvP, if you think this is a good deal, if you think it's too much money for what you get. Keep in mind, this is only for this one game mode. The resources you get are for everywhere, but you still have to be in here. Think of it as if they made a Blitz Pass, where you did the same thing, but it was for Blitz. Kind of the same situation. This is just a brand new game mode. We don't know enough about it. So, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.